Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how to get started with motion matching inside of Unreal Engine 5.4. Motion matching is a new technology inside of Unreal Engine 5.4 that allows you to have dynamic and lifelike character locomotion without the need for using state trees. Epic Games is also going to be releasing a motion matching template in a couple of months. That will include over 200 plus free motion captured animations. But in the meantime, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up motion matching from scratch inside of Unreal Engine 5.4 using some free animations from the Lyra template. So the first thing that you need to do to get started is to obviously make sure you have Unreal Engine 5.4 downloaded and installed. Then go ahead and launch Unreal Engine 5.4 and head over to the games tab and click on the third person template. And we can just name this motion matching and click create. And once we're in our project here, if we hit play, you can already see that we have the default third person character with some basic animations playing. And this is using state trees or state machines to drive the animation. So to get started with motion matching, we're gonna to need to import some animations. So let's go to our content drawer, dock this in layout, and in the content folder, we're gonna create a new folder, call this animations, and double click and open that up. And to import some animations, I actually have some animations that I got from Lyra, the free sample project. So I'll leave a link to download this zip file with all the animations inside of it. So go ahead and download it in the description below. And then just put your project side by side with the folder of all the animations, control A, copy, and drag and drop them in the animations folder. It's gonna pop open with our FBX import options. For our skeleton, we want to hit the drop down and select the SK mannequin. So that's the SK mannequin skeleton and just click import all. That will go ahead and import all 75 animations and just give it a minute to import all the animations. Okay, now with all the animations imported, we want to do a file save all. So if we open any of these animations up, you're going to see that the character has this root motion enabled. So basically a root motion animation is when the character's root bone is driving the animation. So if you go to the skeleton tree and select the root bone, you see that the root bone is moving along with the animation. So we just wanna go into each of these animations and enable root motion, as well as set these to looping. So one way that we could do that is if we just control A to select all the animations, we could right click and go to asset actions we want to go to the edit selection in property matrix, okay? This will allow us to edit all 70 animations at once. So now to edit all the animations, you wanna do control A over here. So you have all 75 animations selected. And in the search tab, you wanna search for root motion. And you want to click enable root motion. And then we'll go ahead and enable it for all of the animations. We also wanna search for one other setting, which is force root lock. And we want to set this to true as well. And then lastly, we want to search for a loop and we want to set the animation to loop. So now save that, that will go ahead and apply all the settings to all 75 animations. And now we should have all of these prepped for motion matching. So now if we go to our content folder, let's make a new folder for motion matching and double click and open this up. And before we go any further, we actually need to enable the plugin for motion matching. So if you go to edit plugins, so I wanna search for motion trajectory. You wanna go ahead and enable this plugin and click yes. It's gonna pop up with a little warning because it is still experimental. And then it's gonna ask you to restart the editor. So go ahead and click restart now. And now that we've restarted our project, we can go into our motion matching folder and we're gonna right click and create a new animation. And down here at the very bottom, we should see now that we have that plugin enabled, this new section for motion matching. So if you don't have it, make sure you enable the plugin. Otherwise, you won't see this new section. And then we just want to go ahead and add this pose search schema. So go ahead and select it. And it's going to pop open to ask us which skeleton we want to pick. So in our case, we're using the SK mannequin. So go ahead and select that. And we'll just name this to capital PSS for pose search schema underscore mannequin and double click and open this up. Basically this asset tells us which bones are assigned to the left and right foot. So if you expand the channels, we can look at index one in this array, expand that, and then we have these sampled bones. So I add index one down here, it's gonna show foot R and then index zero, it's gonna show foot L. Okay, so it's just mapped to the feet bones. So if you don't have these bones mapped, 
for some reason and whatever skeleton you're using you want to just hit this little drop down and map it to those foot bones okay we have foot l and foot r it automatically detects this for us because this is the unreal engine 5 mannequin but if for whatever reason it doesn't you just go ahead and assign it like so okay so we don't have to do anything in here we can go ahead and close out of there and now we want to create a pose search database so right click and under the animation go back to our motion matching tab and add this pose search database asset and it's going to ask us to choose a pose search schema. So we're gonna choose the PSS mannequin, the one that we just created. And now we can name this to our PSD or pose search database underscore mannequin. And then double click and open that up. So this is a brand new editor or window for motion matching. And basically inside of here on the left, we have this asset list and we have this add button. But what the add button allows us to do is to add multiple different animations, and then we can, in this viewport, preview those animations. So we wanna go ahead and add the animations that we've imported and the ones that you've downloaded from the description below. Or if you have any custom animations, you can go ahead and add them. But if you go to your content drawer, hit the little content drawer up here, you can navigate to our animations, and you can either drag and drop them one by one, like so, or you can shift, control A, and drag them in like so. I added this animation twice, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But as you can see, it imported all of the animations and all of our animations are set to looping and they have root motion enabled because we went into the settings and we enabled both of these settings in all of our animations. Now, if you control A, you can see all of the different animation combinations playing on our character, and you can see all the possible movement combinations. And again, the more animations that you have, the better. And Epic Games is going to release a sample project with over 200 plus motion capture ready animations. So whenever that project is released, you can use those animations as well. But we have all of these animations added into the database. So we can go ahead and save this and close out of there. And then lastly, we just want to create one last asset. So right click and under the animation, head back to the motion matching tab. And we want to add this last asset, the pose search normalization set. So go ahead and select that and name this to PSNS for our pose search normalization set. And then do underscore mannequin. And double click, open that up. And then in here, you just want to add a database. So that database asset that we just created, you wanna go ahead and add a new element. And under the drop down, select our pose search database or PSD mannequin. So save that. Now we are all complete with the setup. The last thing that we want to do is we want to create an animation blueprint so we can link all of our motion matching assets with our character blueprint. So right click and under the animation tab, we're going to create a new animation blueprint. That's going to ask us to choose a skeleton. In our case, we're going to choose our SK mannequin the same skeleton that we've been using, click create, and we'll name this to ABP or animation blueprint underscore mannequin. And then double click and open this up. And then in here, we wanna head over first to the event graph. And the event graph allows us to get our character blueprint and allows us to bind certain variables like our character's movement speed to play certain animations in our anim graph. In our case, we want to bind a component called the character trajectory to our motion matching database. Now, first things first, let's actually go ahead and dock this in our window here. And let's find our character blueprint. So if we go to our third person blueprints, in this third person blueprint template, it comes with this blueprint class the third person blueprint. So just double click and open that up. And in the components, we want to add a new component to this character that will allow us to have motion matching on top of it. So you want to click the add and search for character trajectory. So go ahead and select that and then just compile and save that. Now we have that added to our components. Now go back to our animation blueprint and in here up at the top, we're gonna to add a event we can play. And we're going to move this try get pawn owner up here and just do a cast to third person character blueprint. If you want, you could use an interface. You could set up an interface to get the component. But in our case, just to keep things simple, we'll just cast to it and promote this to a variable. That way we can save a hard reference to our character blueprint like so. 
And then down here on our event update animation, we just get our character, third person character blueprint from our variables. And we want to do a is valid check. So we have this is valid. So if our character is valid, off of here we want to drag off and get our character trajectory. And at the very bottom, we have this get character trajectory. And this is that component that we added inside of our third person character. And then we want to take that trajectory component and promote that to a variable and just leave that as a default character trajectory. Okay, so hook that up for the is valid, compile and save. And now we're saving that reference to that component in our blueprint. And lastly, we just need to set up the anim graph. So head over to the anim graph tab. And here's where we're going to bind our motion matching database to this character trajectory component. So in the anim graph, we can right click and get our motion matching. And we want to under the pose search, we want to add this motion matching right here. Let's go ahead and click it. And it's going to ask us to choose a database. So hit the drop down and we have this PSD mannequin or the pose search database that we created with all those animations that we've added. And then we just need to bind the database to our component. So drag off here and search for pose history. We have pose search, pose history. So go ahead and select that. And then right click this trajectory pin. And under the binding, we can hit this drop down and bind this to our character trajectory component. And under the properties, click that trajectory. So go ahead and move this over like so. And lastly, hook up the animation pose into the result and compile save. Okay, so now we should see some animation playing. We have this little idle animation. So we know that this is all working. The last thing that we want to do is set this animation blueprint to our character animation blueprint, in the viewport. So go in the viewport and select our character mesh. And in our animation, we want to hit the drop down and search for our ABP underscore mannequin. So the animation blueprint that we created and we added the motion matching database. So we have that all set up. The last thing I want to do is go and select our third person character, this BP right here, or go to class defaults and search for yaw. And we have use control rotation yaw. I'm going to go ahead and set that to true. That way we can strafe left and right. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, we can go ahead and hit play. And if we move forward, move backward, you can start to see that it's using our motion matching animation set. And to view or debug the motion matching, you want to hit the tilde key on your keyboard and type in a dot character trajectory debug, hit tab space one and click enter. And now we should see this little line in front of the character that shows us the trajectory of our character, and it shows us all the different animations that are playing through the motion matching database. Okay, so it's very simple to get set up with motion matching inside of Unreal Engine. And this is just using those animations from the database. There's no state trees or state machines set up. All it really is, is those three motion matching assets bound using our animation blueprint. Now, obviously the more animations you add, the much better results that you'll get. And so when Epic released the new motion matching template, we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the animations that we get inside of that template, as well as how they have it set up. Anyways, that is going to be it for this video. Just a quick video showing you how to set up motion matching inside of Unreal Engine 5.4. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Check out my multiplayer survival game course, link in the description below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.